Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I hope that you've been enjoying the season so far of The Political Machine 2020. I certainly know I've had a fun time uh, creating the series. It's been a new experience, and I'm certainly enjoying the process so far. I also want to thank you guys so much for hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel. If you haven't had a chance to do so yet, please hit subscribe, and make sure that you also click on that notification bell next to the subscribe button to ensure that you know when the next video is going to be coming out. In today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit similar to the previous episode with um, Vice President Biden's um, potential vice presidential uh, contenders. Uh, so uh, the news has sort of been reporting um, that he has chosen uh, his top four, and they are female uh, vice presidential picks, which I think is great. Um, certainly a little bit different for the country. And I thought it would be fun to choose another one of his vice presidential picks. And so in today's episode, we will be choosing uh, Kamala Harris to run on the Democratic ticket. She is the senator from California, and she's running with the establishment wing of the Democratic Party. And she will be running up against none other than our 46th president, Donald Trump. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get today's episode started. Season 1, Episode 5 of The Political Machine. Already it looks like things are certainly matching up in Kamala Harris's favor. She does have a slight advantage over the president with, uh, you know, 45 to 42, but with still 13% undecided, and we're only in week one, we still have quite a bit of the map to fill. A lot of the Midwest is looking like it's battleground. However, as we've seen in previous episodes, things can certainly change. Uh, you know, seeing Donald Trump in Texas early on, Kamala Harris in New York, seeing that that's a battleground, even though it's early, uh, still very telling for how this election could go through throughout the simulation. So very exciting to see how this would work out, uh, being that Kamala Harris, based off CNN reporting, uh, is on the short list for Vice President Biden's ticket in the 2020 uh, United States election in the fall. So definitely something to take a look at as she goes to Illinois and the president going back to Texas. Kamala Harris giving a speech there in New Jersey and the president going to uh, what looks to be Maryland um, before stopping back off to Georgia. Looks like we have our first set of town halls happening here. Donald Trump in Texas giving a speech after his town hall, and Kamala Harris going to Wisconsin, where she previously gave a speech in Florida. Definitely looking at the Midwest, it is very hard to imagine Michigan going back to Donald Trump uh, from 2016, um, especially with the way that the polls are, you know, sort of stacking up against the president in the the real election at this time. Uh, you know, Kamala Harris getting a campaign headquarters there matching Donald Trump vote for vote in North Carolina, and I really think that that's something that you could see in uh, the real election, 11% uh, undivided, uh, undecided rather, um, and a slight enthusiasm boost for Republicans there. Um, but again, going into the northern portions, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio, all getting campaign headquarters uh, for Kamala Harris. Uh, Donald Trump, even though he's a tycoon, even though he has a lot of money and the simulation recognizes that, uh, it might take a little bit more than money to win this election for Donald Trump. It's going to be very hard to see uh, Donald Trump victory um, if Kamala Harris continues to do what she's doing. Uh, Donald Trump coming out with his first ideology purchase of the evening, America First. Kamala Harris has yet to come out with an ideology, but it's still early. 
as I say that, of course, universal health care for Kamala Harris. Definitely trying to extend that base out uh, to the more liberal wing of that party. Remember, Kamala Harris is that establishment sort of Democrat uh, coming from the state of California, uh, being an establishment, uh, you know, probably something possibly to do with Orange County, if you think about the Republican base of uh, the California voter. Town halls happening here in week nine in Minnesota and North Dakota. Both candidates wasting no time. Public opinion, uh, public option rather, coming out for Kamala Harris and bringing home the troops for President Trump. And allies paying their fair share. Another uh, strategic, uh, you know, sort of ideology purchase for the president. Abortion rights coming in for Kamala Harris as we move into more town halls. This is a very fast uh, moving election as the vice presidential picks have been chosen. And for the Democrats, it is none other than Amy Klobuchar, Minnesota senator and Democrat from the great 10,000 Lake State there in Minnesota versus Mitt Romney, the former uh, governor of. Massachusetts and current senator of Utah. Uh, so definitely going to be a little interesting. Mitt Romney's not necessarily the biggest fan of the president, so uh, definitely trying to bring in that Republican traditional base, I would say. Uh, it would be a more Mitt Romney style voter. voter. Uh, being that Mitt Romney was the former uh, 2012 presidential uh, Republican nominee, it would make sense that Mitt Romney would assist in this 2020 election for the president, I suppose. And, I, you know, taking a look at New England here, I'm very surprised that it's not as strong for Kamala Harris right now as it should be, I believe. Uh, if you think about New England, traditional Democratic candidates uh, usually tend to do a little bit better there. However, I think that Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren style Democrat is really what's coming out into play uh, potentially for that, uh, that New England voter. You know, universal health care, single payer system, um, you know, student loan forgiveness, more progressive. Kamala Harris, definitely more of an establishment Democrat. Amy Klobuchar, even more of an establishment Democrat than, you know, obviously Elizabeth Warren or Mike Bloomberg. Uh, so very different things. A smear merchant being purchased for Kamala Harris in Georgia. Not really sure how well that's going to do. She hasn't really used that many ideology points thus far. Um, and I think that's why we're having so many battleground states. She has quite a few different campaign headquarters, but not a lot of ads, not a lot of smear merchants, not really any fixers, don't really see any intimidators from the Harris campaign. And I suppose the same could be said for the Trump campaign. They're not really, you know, utilizing all of the resources uh, for the game uh, to get this election swung in either direction. 7% undecided, 47-46 in week 18. Definitely going to be interesting. Taking a look over here at the polls on the big board. And if the election were held, uh, gun control coming out for Kamala Harris, <laughs> part of the big board. Electoral votes for Kamala Harris, 333-205 for the president. So if the election were in week 19, uh, Senator Harris would have this election wrapped up handedly. Uh, moving in through the rest of the board, it's looking uh, like Senator Harris could win the Midwest but lose the South. Trump really needs to hang on to Pennsylvania and Ohio if he's going to win the election. But right now, 50% for Harris in Pennsylvania. And again, 49% for Trump, but still 3% undecided. That's going to really mean the difference between the election here. Can Trump hang on to Ohio? Can he flip Pennsylvania? Will he be able to hold on to Wisconsin from 2016? We're about ready to find out. This is Trump versus Kamala Harris. 
And as the states roll in, it's 49-50 in favor of the president. But as we know, the popular vote is not what is not what counts in the United States. It is the Electoral College. And the number is 270. 270 is the number that is needed to win the White House in 2020. And already, we are starting to see flips from 2016 both on Democrat and Republican side here. Harris flipped the state of Florida, held on and flipped to Pennsylvania. This is great news if you're Kamala Harris, and this is not so great news if you're Donald Trump winning Ohio, but losing Michigan and Pennsylvania. That is crucial, and also losing Mississippi, and that has to do with that minority appeal that Kamala Harris has brought uh, to this election. She has clearly shown that she is a, uh, a candidate for all Americans, not just a candidate for uh, African Americans, but for all of us. And I think that that was something crucial um, that she said in previous debates with Vice President Biden. And if you, if you look here, uh, Colorado and uh, New Mexico sort of doing a little bit of a flip there from 2004. And Nevada going blue, Washington blue, and Oregon going for Harris. Harris there takes it with California and Hawaii, leaving Alaska in the cold. 246 for the president, 292 for Harris. She's taken the day and has won handedly with the Electoral College. And one of the deciding factors was her use of ideology points. Which even though it didn't seem like it, she actually did use more ideology points than the president. She did spend way less money than the president, but that just goes to show you that a billionaire cannot necessarily win the White House if his ideologies are not completely lined up with the American way. Well, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode of Political Machine 2020, Season 1, Episode 5, Kamala Harris and President Trump. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like today's video and subscribe for more if you haven't done so already. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about today's video and any suggestions that you may have for future videos. Or if you have another idea for a series that you want to see me do, let me know. I also have links down below on how to get in contact with me. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, sitting through my video today. Really hope you enjoyed it.